So I was in the middle of doing an oil pan gasket on this truck, and with the oil pan off, I saw this piece hanging out between the timing chain cover and the engine block. If you don't know what it is, this is actually a piece of your timing chain guide, which means we have a big issue. Behind me is this Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter Triton V8. In this video, I want to go over with you how to fix this issue. And to do the job right, I strongly suggest replacing all other timing components at the same time. You can buy those and many other parts at oneauto.com. So what is a timing chain? A timing chain is this metal chain here that connects your upper half of the engine, the camshafts, to the lower half of your engine, which is the crankshaft. These two or three because you have two camshafts and one crank in this case, they need to all be perfectly synchronized together so that your engine can run smoothly. But the timing chains are only one of the main components of your timing system. Another one are these timing chain guides, which help guide the chain along where it needs to stay. And these actually wear out over time and do require periodic maintenance. And if you don't maintain them or, well, replace them every once in a while, you could end up with something like this, which is, well, could be catastrophic. Thankfully for us, it did not result in a failure of the engine, but it was close. One last component to your timing system are these timing chain tensioners. And what these do is they just put tension on the chain so that it doesn't jump around while it's spinning in there. And you might be asking, would a timing belt be more advantageous than a chain? Or would a chain be better than a belt? Um, well, not really, they both have their pros and cons. You have to do maintenance on both. In a timing belt setup, you have to replace the belt every once in a while, as well as all the other components that hold it and drive it. On a timing chain setup, you still have to do maintenance. So regardless of which one you have, neither are maintenance free. So how can a timing chain system even fail? Well, you could have three main failure points, the chain, the tensioner, or the guide, which is what our problem actually is. And the most common denominator for all these parts to fail is usually lack of oil changes. If you don't keep up on your oil changes, not only can your chains wear down, but your guides can wear down too. As you can see, this one has a ton of grooves on it. This one's not too bad, actually. There's, there's a lot of life left in it, but it's not the greatest. If you compare it to this new one, which obviously has no marks in it, that's a big difference. And the other guide can wear too, even if this is not the one that is being pressurized by the tensioner. And let's say you do keep up with your oil changes. It's always fresh, your timing chain system is always well lubricated. Well, in that case, it's time that's going to basically destroy this. Uh, these are plastic guides, and imagine over the course of, let's say, 10 years, how many thousands of heat cycles these have to go through, and they're always soaked in oil. So the plastic is going to break down over time. So if you don't keep up on your oil change, that's what's gonna destroy your timing chain system. And if you do keep up on your oil change, well, remember to service your guides, or preferably the whole system, otherwise this can happen. I do believe that this truck had frequent oil changes, the engine is very clean inside, and I do believe that this is the original timing chain guide from when the truck was built, almost 200,000 miles ago. So this was bound to happen. So having said all that, let's take this engine apart and get started on our repair. I'm gonna remove the air intake first, unplug any wires that are attached to it. Now remove the throttle body cover that's sitting up top so you can pull the rest of the intake off. Take off the fan shroud with the fan at the same time, get that out of the way. Next, I'm gonna take out the belt as well as the pulleys that are in my way, including the water pump, which you don't have to remove, but I strongly recommend replacing it. Next is the power steering pump pulley for which you'll need a special puller for. And then the harmonic balancer, the crank, that you need a special puller for as well. Now in this shot, you'll see the intake is missing. You do not have to remove this. This is off for a completely different purpose, but I am removing the valve covers, which you do need to remove on both sides. Now let's remove the timing cover, take out all the bolts that surround it. And then with the pry bar, gently work it back and forth. It has two dowel pins that it needs to pop off of, and then you can take your timing cover right off. You can see right here is our problem. This is the rest of the broken timing chain guide, and it's actually so broken that it's not even holding on anymore. I can just freely remove it and reinstall it, even though it's supposed to be bolted on. And now that the timing chain is exposed, let's time this engine, put it at top dead center. It's really easy to do that for this engine. This is, by the way, the 
two valve 5.4, not the three valve with variable valve timing. That one's a little bit different. We're dealing with the two valve here, but regardless of what engine you have, it will make things a lot easier if you remove your spark plugs. So grab your spark plug socket and take them all out. As you do this, try to feel for how tight they are because this engine is notorious for having spark plugs get loose and then shoot out of their spark plug holes, which will ruin the threads and can cause other damage. So pay attention to it and address the problem if it's there. I actually had two spark plugs that were kind of loose, so I'm gonna keep an eye on those after the engine's all back together. Now it's time to time this engine, spin the crankshaft clockwise. And for me, because I have this broken chain guide, I have to hold it in place just because I don't want anything to skip around. And you want to position the passenger side camshaft at 11 o'clock, the driver side camshaft at 12 o'clock, and then the crank is automatically going to line up at 12 o'clock. If it's not perfect, that's okay. We can make it perfect after. You can use a 3 8 breaker bar and hold the camshafts in place or rotate them as needed to get the chains off. Sometimes that helps remove tension off the chains. Take both tensioners off, take all of the guides off. And for me, because I had the broken one, I'm gonna have to remove the bolts that are still in there. And that is how you remove all of your timing components. And now that you're in this far, definitely do not just replace the broken component. Replace all of your timing components. Replace both chains for the left and the right cylinder head. Replace both tensioners. There are two of them, one for each chain. And replace all of your timing chain guides. These are only two of them. These are both for one side. Both sides will have two timing chain guides. And you definitely want to replace all of them because like I mentioned earlier, they're plastic and they do not last forever. Now for me, this guide was broken, not the tensioner guide, which means the chain didn't lose tension, but it was still free floating at the top there. So it could have skipped timing at any moment. And if it did, that would mean catastrophic failure of the engine. The pistons would hit the valves and that would be the end of that engine unless you'd want to rebuild a lot of things, but it might not be worth it. Now, depending on which component in your timing chain system is damaged or broken, it could result in more stress being added to other components that are trying to make up for that damaged part. And that's why you want to replace all of your components at once when you're in there. Now let's get all the timing components back together. Make sure your engine is still timed properly. Mine is, so I don't have to worry about that. And with the chain and tensioner and guides all bolted up and ready to go, let's get the timing cover back on get your valve covers on, we'll get all the pulleys reattached, put the fan and the fan shroud back, and if you removed your water pump, go ahead and put on a new one, which I personally recommend, and you can get one at oneauto.com. If you did do your water pump, go ahead and fill it up with coolant, and one last thing I strongly recommend is an oil change. The oil pan was open in the front while the timing chain cover was off, so definitely change that oil. So now that you've fixed your problem, I hope the video helped you out and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. And it could be bad in a couple different ways. It could be, great, I tangled it. You can see there are two of them. Two, this is two, <laughs> whatever. So now that you've fixed your problem, I hope you helped the video, what? <laughs>